Hi, everybody. Hello, beautiful, familiar faces and new, new members of the community. So nice to see so many that I know. Tina, Wendy, Angela, Amy, Ginger, Elizabeth, Faye, Nancy, Kelly, Rose. <laughs> Who else hears the rooster joy as Ginger has so aptly named it? <laughs> Welcome back 12 hours later to many of you. I did notice that um, I have uh, neglected to put up my live stream replays. Um, I'm a little behind on that. So thank you for those who support me on YouTube and also stay tuned. I've got to the tarot live that we had that was amazing the other day and then I think conversations with God and then also yesterday so yeah we've got a couple in the queue um, so stay tuned for those I've actually been very busy with many other actions, so yeah, that one got neglected. So we got a couple Nancys here. <clears throat> yes, it is. So I'm in Bali, if you don't know that, and it's 9 a.m. here, so still morning, beautiful morning in Bali as always. Welcome, Jay, Wendy, <coughs> a few Wendy's. Um, yeah, I was reflecting on my morning practice. Who all, who all does not have a morning practice? I imagine many of you do. I imagine many of you have um, maybe insight timer as a part of your morning practice. Um, Angela does not. Do you think it might be valuable? Um, Jason, welcome. Yes, Amy, we have a couple Amy's as well, so lacking your morning practice right now. Amazing, Tina, Sue, welcome, Jamie, welcome back. <clears throat> oh, nice, Nancy self-reiki in the morning. Is there any other reiki practitioners that use self-reiki? Hmm. Hi, Karen. Nice to see you. Been a little while. Ooh, nice. Um, and also, it's interesting, too. This goes in alignment with, um, for many of you that were here uh, 12 hours ago, whenever that was, um... For many of you, it was your morning time, and we did a powerful morning practice with Reiki, and it included like um, feeling the energy of how you want to feel in your day, creating that, and then imagining yourself at the end of your day having had, you know, created the day that you have 
intended. <clears throat> so those of you, I know a number of you are here from then. So how has that gone for you? Did that make a difference for you? In which elements, um, which elements of that morning for <laughs> quote morning practice for y'all were most helpful? Um, hello, I think we have three Nancys now. Amazing. Great, Ginger. Unexpected bonus, good experiences. Wendy had, I know you were cleaning the house, so you felt very grounded. Hi, Britt. Great to see you. So there's something um, called the reticulating, reticular activating system, the RAS. I might have those words a little bit off if somebody wants to correct me. But it basically is something in the brain that it, it it's like, about bias so that if um, if you start to look for something you will find it basically so even in what we did this morning the creation of your day setting that intention then it's a part of your brain that then starts looking for evidence of that um, Tony Robbins was where I first heard this and he, you know, I, it was some sort of group he was doing <clears throat> and he, he had an exercise that I'll do with you right now. It's, it's quite simple and I've done this before, like look around the room that you're in, the place that you're in and look for everything blue. Just look around blue, 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 blue. I'm doing it too, I've got to take my glasses off. Look for blue everywhere you are, blue, 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 blue. Now close your eyes and imagine everything yellow in the room. Picture the room with your eyes closed and find everything that was yellow. Now open your eyes and look for yellow. So that's a very simple practice to show basically what you're looking for you will find and what you're not focused on finding you won't see. Great Ginger, shifting shifted out of fear and anxiety and looking forward to sunrises and delights. Amazing. Tina, yes, it will go on my channel, and also, as I said, I'm a bit, <clears throat> I've got a, a number of them in the queue, so it will be a few days. Um, hi, EI. Yes, so use that. Use that. I mean, what's the bigger lesson? What's the bigger lesson in that very simple practice? What you focus on, you know, grows and expands and you, and you find evidence of it. So then you apply that to spiritual principles. Yeah. And this is why gratitude. And it's like we've heard this stuff so many times it ceases to have power and also it's so super powerful. Gratitude practice. When we go through our day and we're actually looking for things we can be grateful for, we're going to find more and more of those things. And then that energy is going to create more and more of those things. Yes. Where your attention goes, energy flows. You know, nobody is, nobody is here but you. 
Nobody is in your mind but you. Nobody can go in there and do this for you. It's got to take a personal internal commitment, a click and a shift within yourself to when the part of the mind comes up that's like, oh, but it's too hard, or oh, I can't do it, or oh, you know, but you don't understand about my life and my problems and my circumstances, and that didn't work for me when I started to look for good things. I mean, whatever the story is. There's got to be, if you're ready, something inside that's like, no more. <clears throat> and this ties back to the morning practice. What I know, so I've, you know, I've, I've had a varying relationship with that. I mean, I always do something. Sometimes that something is one something, and then the mind judges it's not enough, and also it's something <laughs> to many somethings. And what I notice when I'm in a better, a higher vibration, let's say, because to me that has a lack of judgment when I frame things in that way. You know, when I feel I'm doing better, but I don't, I don't like that. When I'm in a higher vibration, my morning practice is more rich <clears throat> and I'm more committed to it. Has anybody noticed that for themselves? Hi, Duchess. Hi, Mishi. So this morning I woke up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this meditation that I'm doing right now. And I did it and I was like, Part of my mind was like, ah, well, I don't feel like doing the other stuff. I don't feel like it. it that's good enough. And that's okay. And also, there's a missed, there's an opportunity here in that. And how many, I mean, we have these moments all day, every day. We have these moments in our external world actions that we choose to take or not as well as in our mind when we choose to believe you know the ego and the mind and the stories or choose something higher so i talked about this michael singer talk yes in my last live 12 hours ago <clears throat> and um I can send it to anybody that wants. Just send me a private message. I'll send the link. So the thing in there that he said that was like most impactful in this specific talk was um, when you overcome yourself, because basically this is what's happening. When we choose the higher thought, when we choose... You know, when I, when I choose to, uh, I don't really feel like it, but I'm going to do it anyway. When we choose that, there's like an energy. Because how many of you just feel into that for a second, right? Like, <clears throat> uh, I don't want to do something. Okay, I cannot do it. But then there, there's, there's an energetic imbalance or there there there's it's not clean energy right versus oh there's you know so for me it was going out i do this um tibetan um rights five tibetan rights uh movements every day <clears throat> so when when i was like no sweetie natalie no, I'm, I'm doing this. 
in the moment where I decide and then I take that step to go outside on my porch and put out my yoga mat and then actually do it and continue and complete the energetics of that are very different than the ener energetics of yeah I don't I don't feel like it and of course there's not a good bad right and wrong here It's about, we have an opportunity, we have an invitation. And we have these all day long. And if our soul's purpose is to be and decide who we really are, as Conversations with God says, to become the highest version of ourselves, which is empowered, which is creative, which is abundant, which is at choice, which is you know, knowing ourselves to, to be all of that, then me overcoming that small self, that part to go out and do the thing. That's a very different sort of an energy. And Michael Singer was saying in that talk that because it's about willpower is the way he framed it. I exercise use of my will. I exercised use of my will to overcome the egoic or small self by going out and doing the, you know, doing the, the action that I said I was going to do. And that energy then, and I'm just going to try to say how, and maybe I know Ginger was the one who shared that aspect of the talk because they also listen to it maybe you can <laughs> help me out with articulating it but what <clears throat> what I understood him to say is is that when we exercise our will in that way that that transmutes that energy and it becomes like more available and then we have more power <laughs> to be able to utilize it's like putting power into our power bank instead of if we don't choose then it's a depletion so that's really landed with me How many of you guys can relate to saying you're going to do things and not doing them? How many of you can relate to not being able to trust yourself, not believing in yourself? And not as a judgment, just as a noticing of a pattern. <laughs> Hi, Laura. Jamie said something about your morning. Hi, Duchess. Hi, Marielle. Oh, so Jamie overcame themselves, went outside, and was rewarded with a beautiful cardinal view. <clears throat> so many of you. Hi, Sarah. Welcome back. So many of you can relate to that. Yes, it's human nature and also... The humans that we are evolving into are leaving that behind. And there, there does get to be a balance, so that's a good point. We, I feel like it's more about making an empowered choice from expansion rather than say, say, you're overtired and overexerted and then you're like but I said I would do this thing and then it's like ah you 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 push yourself over the edge I would say be very careful with that cuz it could be very easy to 
write off a lot of things in that way. But yes, of course, you know, there may be times. So even yesterday, I was co-working with a friend and I, I, con I, I made it like a verbal goal with her of what I was going to do, that I was going to work on something for an hour. And I was like, hey, I'm going to work on this thing for an hour. You know, today I will do that. Well, my day unfolded and I worked on it for about 30 or 40 minutes. And then I, I had to go take care of something else that popped up. And after I did that, I discerned that I am not going to try and squeeze in this last 20 or 30 minutes because of the rest of my day in the way it was looking. So the way I kept my word to myself was, is I reached out to the friend and I was like, hey, I'm just like renegotiating my agreement with myself that I said I would do this for an hour and also I did it for 30, 40 minutes and I am changing that because of my schedule and the things that happen in the day. So because what, when we say we're gonna do things and we don't do them and then there's this self-betrayal and lack of self-trust pattern that happens and then we don't believe ourselves when we tell ourselves I'm going to lose 10 pounds or I'm going to X, Y, Z. <clears throat> We've, we are, have created a pattern that we are out of integrity with our word to ourselves. We've broken our word to ourselves so many times. And no matter how you slice it, that never feels good. I know a number of you follow me elsewhere, which I always appreciate it. And I haven't even said, please follow me here on Insight Timer if you don't already. And if you care to give a donation, it's appreciated. You know, you can check all my resources here. And then also please follow me on socials, YouTube, Facebook, Insta. <clears throat> so I made a post yesterday. And yes, Wendy, those addicts, alcoholics, people in any sort of recovery, it's very much a thing. Um for addicts, because that's the powerlessness, you know, every day waking up, I'm quitting today, or even smoking, or whatever, coffee, I mean, it could be also anything, and then we don't quit. So, what I, the invitation here for y'all is, is to start noticing that pattern, In noticing, you know, this is the evolution of your soul. This is you stepping into and owning the power that you are and that you have. This is you on your journey away from playing small. The famous Marianne Williamson quote, you playing small does not serve the world. If you think of all the people that are, are in, you know, inspire us in the world, they're not, I mean, for the most part, generally, they're not playing small and they've overcome themselves. And they've created themselves. You know, I talk about Oprah a lot as being one of those super inspirational people. Tony Robbins is another. 
and I'm not saying these people are perfect. And also, if you look at their stories, they're very inspiring. You know, even me, you know, 25 years out of alcohol and drug addiction, and some of y'all, and I've shared, you know, some of the details of that. So we all have that within us. And so this is coming out. I mean, I didn't plan to say all of this, really. Hi, Vicki. That we all have an invitation here. We've only got one life. It's not very long. Michael Singer hammers that home every single talk he gives. Amazing, Jamie, when you're sober this month. I didn't know. And wishing y'all peace and healing, those that are dealing with physical ailments. Are you a friend of Bill? <laughs> um, so, being in integrity with our word. When we say something to ourselves or to another and we don't do it, it's very damaging. And, and many of you, when I said, can you relate to, you know, lack of self-trust and self-betrayal, like a flood of yeses came in. On the journey to self-love, to, you know, you becoming the highest and best version of yourself in this lifetime is the, this is, you know, this is it. You've got to learn to start trusting yourself. And that starts with the smallest things like my example for me. I have this morning practice. It includes these things. I wake up. Oh, but eh, I don't really feel like it. No. Michael Singer in the talk I mentioned, I, I've referenced, he gave these two examples of, you know, you don't start, you can start big if you want, like whatever, but he, of course, the low hanging fruit <laughs> that we know of, he says with this one, he was like, okay, this is what it is. You're eating a dessert and usually, you know, you save the best bite for last. Don't eat that last bite. Whoa. <laughs> the other example he says he gave was when he started on this journey 45 years ago, he would be in the shower. Before he got out of the shower, he would make the water a little bit colder. Ooh. So these things, it doesn't have to be that, okay, starting tomorrow, I'm going to go out and run 10 miles every day. No. Create stretches for yourself every day. So y'all that know and follow me have heard me talk about my money mindset program, which I'm going to share something about that in a minute. And also one thing that that book says is because there's five steps to overcoming under earning, which is scarcity and lack. She calls it under earning which I love that term because it so fits. Step three of the five-step process is stretch. And so the book says every day do something to stretch yourself. So for me, even in that tiny example where I had that just, tiny inkling that small moment of uh, but I don't it's sat, it's Sunday morning I don't have to you know do anything till nine so I've got this time I want to you know blah 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 I stretched myself 
and it builds a muscle. And in coaching, I call that, it's like a train. I said it, I did it. I said it, I did it. I said it, I did it. You start to trust yourself and you start to trust your word to yourself. And then you will either, you know, follow through on all of the things that you're telling yourself that you're going to do or you will be and or you'll be more discerning in the things that you say that you're going to do hi jamie other jamie start trusting yourself great <clears throat> Yep. So, you know, I'm leading this money mindset program starting June 1st and I've had a journey with money and finances. And I mean, of course, as we all do and have, and just to keep it short, you know, a number of months ago, I was really just deeply in this process of changing that area of my life, you know, doing practices. I mean, I've given lives about these things. You've heard me talk about it. And so I felt really inspired and passionate to offer a, like a money mindset program because, you know, it's very interesting to me because of my own journey in, in, uh, with this. And so, you know, there was a lot of procrastination that happened until it didn't until I just was like, I am saying this and I am doing this. I've been putting this off for too long. I want to do it. it. I've said it. I'm going to do it. So I set the date. I started talking about it, started offering it. And in the meantime, I mean, we always want to be careful about the words we choose, right? So I hear in my mind what my mind wants to say, and I'm like, no, I'm not going <laughs> to tell that story. I'll just say that there's been challenges, financial challenges that made me then question, like, who am I to do this? Is this the right time? But then I thought, no, like I have to, I committed. Now I've got people have also committed. And there was a lot of like second guessing and, and judging myself. to where it was like, do I postpone? Because honestly, I, I felt so like out of alignment and out of integrity because I had all of this going on in the background. And then, you know, it's classic imposter syndrome that I didn't even see until it was pointed out of like, oh God, if people find out who, who I really am. They're, you know, they're going to see I'm a fraud. They're not going to like me. They're not going to want to do it. But that's basically what it was in my mind, really attached to that because of, you know, the financial challenges and things that have been coming up. So, so like two days ago, I, I haven't even announced this program like on social I've just been sharing about it you know to to my circles you and clients and people in my world and I thought okay you know I get to do this because I still there's a few spots left <clears throat> so I made this post but it just felt so I didn't feel inspired. I feel like I felt like I had to do it. And then I'm like, I don't even know what to say. It just felt so there was like nothing there. And, and I didn't want to have, I'm not a person that like makes like, well, I don't perceive myself that I'm a person that makes like fake posts and things like that. So, but I'm like, I want to promote this. 
So I took my money post from last year that I've talked about and y'all have maybe read and I just like was like, okay, well, I mean, this is where that kind of started. I'll just repost that and be like, hey, also, you know, this program. But after I posted it and I went on the, my walk and I just was like, it just, it just doesn't energize. It just doesn't feel right. So I came home. Nobody had interacted with it yet. So I'm like, okay, I'm deleting it. That's my sign. And then I thought, what do I really want to say? Like, if I didn't care what people think, if I didn't have all this judgment or it, basically if I didn't care what people think, what would I say? And I wrote that out and I'm like, this is what I get to say. And it, it was such a energetic experience of like, it was just such a relief because in one definition of integrity is our insides match our outsides. And so many times in life on social media, our insides don't match our outsides. And, you know, of course there's, we get to be discerning about that. I mean, we get to show up in the world, but it doesn't, but ultimately no, I'm like, no matter what, no matter where our insides can match our outsides in any context. So my insides were not matching my outsides when I made that post. And so I deleted it. I rewrote it. And even though it felt scary and even though it was like, well, blah, 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 the stories and the judgments that I had in my head, I'm just like, fuck it. If people don't like me, if people want to leave the program, if people judge me, then they're not my people anyway, and I don't need to be perfect. And, and also, I'm still going to go through with this program. And I'm going to do it. I mean, I'm going to be doing it as well. So... There, there's so many like little lessons from everything that's already been talked about in that today. But yeah, thank you, Angela. And thank you for, <clears throat> for those of you that I know a number of you did um, share your support on social about it. And I appreciate it. And also it's like, that's great. And at the end of the day, I also, you know, it's, it's really just myself that matters and it's a bonus you know if others are supportive and validating so thank you Matt <clears throat> so I posted that and I, I feel so good about it so you know I said it I did it I set the date I'm doing it. And I also, you know, cleaned up, cleaned up all that stuff within myself. So that's the message for the day. Well, the be the beginning of the message. So if anybody does resonate with everything I said, and also, you know, if you are struggling with your finances or have, I mean, for me, it's from childhood. I mean, for most everybody, right? But if you're ready, like this is going to require, so as I've been creating this program, what I'm realizing is this is going to require the same amount of commitment and transformation that it took <coughs> for me when I got clean and sober as an alcoholic and drug addict, like a bad alcoholic and drug addict. 
the level of change that was required for me to get clean and sober 25 years ago is the same level of change that changing my financial life and everyone who is going to be doing this it's going to take that same level of change and transformation and that was a huge aha because i had it in my head that it wouldn't take that but the more i'm i'm studying and absorbing and creating you know this curriculum that's what i see everything's going to have to change and i've made changes in the past and also it wasn't enough Hi, Joanne. So, the card. Ooh, ooh. So, this is our main card for our collective reading that we're going to do now. Ooh, I'm so excited. So, this one just flew out, if maybe you saw. We've never gotten this one. I've rarely even seen this one. <coughs> Renee, congrats on three years and I can guarantee you you will feel healed I can promise you that if you continue to do the things you did to get three years if you continue to do those things you will feel healed so thank you for sharing that yes Just say yes. So I feel like this is basically saying yes to everything in the messages that have come through so far. Like validating the truth of, of what's come through as well as, you know, whatever this yes means for you. Like whatever's come up for you during this session, whatever it's brought to your mind and heart that if, if you've wondered, if you have had a question, the answer is yes. Or if your mind's like, no, maybe it's not this or that. It's like, no, yes, it is. <laughs> it maybe you've been in denial about something. Maybe you don't know, haven't known what path to take. Diana, 11 and a half years sober. Love all of um, these other uh, people in recovery here. So, what do you get to say yes to? What have you been saying no to that you get to flip to a yes? What have you been saying no to out of fear? Like even my example of the program of like, I was a yes, then I like was flipping into a no. And then even about the post, it was like, no, yes, 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 yes. You're doing all of this. Yes. You're. <clears throat> Hi, Anais or Anais. Welcome. So I've shared that before I did plant medicine a couple times. The last time was, mm, it's coming up on five years. And I've shared about that experience. It's been a long, like a year ago, but I did a live stream on it. It was really powerful. And so one of my biggest takeaways from that experience was, the, and it was the most intense experience of my life, was that God, whatever you believe that to be, God is yes. And I fully experienced that and believe it to be true for me. So that also is there. <clears throat> so I'm going to use our Osho Zen Tarot. I used this yesterday. Um... So I'm liking these. So I'm going to clarify the yes and get some more information. Diana, so I was talking about that I'm hosting a group money mindset program. 
and that's what what I was talking about. Not something I signed up for, I don't think. So this card popped out on the floor. And if anybody wants to go back, I do have all of my live streams on YouTube as replays. I am in a little bit of a backlog, so this one will be up in a number of days. But just so anybody knows, you can, um, yeah, ah, access any of my live streams. Thank you. So I'm going to draw two more cards for this yes. So is there anybody here that um, like uh, doesn't know what that yes is about? Ooh, look at this one. We're taking that. Ooh. <clears throat> and I'm going to take Okay, two more. Okay. Mmm, <coughs> you said yes to getting married. Amazing. Congratulations. So, yeah, if there's anything where you're, like, wanting more confirmation on the yes or you're not quite sure what the yes is, these cards can clarify that. So, we've got going with the flow, which to me is yes. And this is another thing with my, um, my uh, plant medicine yes experience was like surrender. This is a card of surrender, a card of total surrender. So, this is your advice, surrender to the yes. The only problem you ever have is resistance, period, to this whatever's unfolding in the moment or in your mind. So when you totally surrender and go with the flow, it releases everything. So I even have a meditation called Total Surrender in my premium tracks. Check that out if you want to get more into this energy. Then we have no thingness. So this is a really clear message for you. Around this yes. What's coming through is like what is for you, you're not going to have to push and effort and force and try or resist. If it's meant for you, it's, it's just, it's just going to flow. And it's like surrendering to, this is really deeply spiritual. Surrendering to the unknown, surrendering to the emptiness, surrendering to nothing, no thing. Letting go, like this void. Like this is also God. Yes, Jamie. You picked up on what my mind was in Joe Disp was thinking of Joe Dispenza. This is the quantum field. The quantum field of all possibility, which is everything and nothing. Wow. Isn't it amazing, the collective consciousness? You can't make this shit up. <laughs> Diana, faith with your heart. I mean, that is faith. Yeah. Ooh, amazing, Tina. So Joe, Dr. Joe has a book called Becoming Supernatural, which is kind of a synopsis of all his teachings. So yeah, this is definitely like multidimensional, cosmic, um, you know, energy and ideas here. Yeah. Funny, Jamie, I don't know if you were in the or I was telling somebody 
I just did a Joe Dispenza meditation a couple days ago for the first time um, in a long while. And I used to like, I found him like nine years ago or eight years ago. I've been to workshops. I was a Joe Dispenza fanatic, you know, for a couple years and did his very long hour long meditations every day. It was a very transformational time in my life. Ah, Duchess, great. So what have you been resisting that you get to become a yes to? Awesome, Elizabeth. I love his walking meditations. I went to an advanced retreat. We walked on the beach in Cancun, walking meditation there. So life is trying to help you. Well, it is. It's not trying. It is. God slash life slash happenings, whatever's happening in your life, whatever's unfolding, your life situation. It's here to help you create yourself. And that, like, I say this all the time. Every teacher, although they, it's like they're saying the same thing in different ways. So conversations with God says, you know, we came here to be and decide and create. Life is a process of, not a process of discovery, it's a process of creation. And Joe says that too. And this is why the earlier talk examples that I was giving about overcoming yourself by even those quote, small things and saying it and doing it, you're creating yourself. So life is going to bring things. So whatever you're in resistance with, so think about your day, any stress, anxiety, problems, within that is an opportunity and a gift. When you can flip your mindset to look at and, and release resistance and, and become a yes, like right now, I have this situation where there's resistance and my ego mind is like a no and I'm working with that. I'm seeing that. I get to become a yes to it because I do believe, you know, I'm, it's a co-creation. I'm creating this. Life is happening, unfolding for me to give me everything that I say that I want. So I say I want ABC these things come in that look like problems and challenges and stresses and I don't like it. Actually, within these things are the gifts and the blessings and the yes and the giving, try, it's trying to give you what you want. Hi, Nikki. Duchess is up leveling. Thank you, Diana, for the donation. So the other two cards are, so it's like after all of that and because of all of that and this process of up-leveling, of transformation, look what we have, flowering. So once you become empty, no thing, no time, no place, release the resistance, come into alignment with life, however life is unfolding, what is that yes? you will then, then something can flower and grow. Resistance, it can't grow. This is the queen of um, pentacles in traditional tarot, the queen of rainbows. She's abundant. She's full of abundance. She's in her power. And this is material and financial blessings. And this queen is very much about self-care, nurturing, self-love, that earthly mother energy. <clears throat> yeah. I'm actually going to find that Marianne quote, or actually can somebody find it? that famous Marianne Williamson quote about who are you to, you know, 
be great. It's been misattributed to Nelson Mandela, but it's not. It's Marion Williamson. <clears throat> if you can't find it, I'll find it. But if you can, somebody can post it, that'd be great. So then we have a breakthrough, of course. Because within this, when you start releasing resistance and start and, and continue and deepen into this journey, it's like, what do you say you want? What do you tell yourself is missing that if you had it, you'd be happy? Why do you want those things? What do you really want? And then if you really say you want it, then you're the only one stopping you from getting it. <clears throat> Thank you, Ginger. So read that and I'm going to read it out loud. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We are we're born to make manifest the glory of God that's within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Do y'all see why I was thinking of that quote? You're the only one holding yourself back. Your playing small does not serve the world. So I want y'all to take that quote, copy and paste it now, or you can just search Marianne playing small or whatever. It's her most famous quote. You can see why. I mean, that's the breakthrough. that we start to believe and see ourselves as who we truly are, which we are powerful creators beyond measure. We're infinite beings. And like I said earlier, I gave those examples, you know, like Oprah and all of the people who have overcome very, you know, challenging circumstances. <laughs> And it's not even about the results you're getting. It's about who you become on that journey. You become a different person. The old self has to die so you can be reborn. And when you keep your word to yourself, when you, when you tell yourself, I'm going to X, Y, Z today, and you do it, that's you overcoming yourself, having a breakthrough. Mm, Renee, wow. Many lessons in that experience I can only imagine. Thank you for sharing. So we're gonna get into the Reiki and ancestral clearing part of the session now. Does anybody have questions or comments? about what has we've covered or about what we're about to do. And again, take that, um, yeah, what is that yes for you? Thank you, thank you EI, me too. Reiki and Ancestral Clearing, Nikki.
excuse me. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so how I want you to show up or my, not want you, well, whatever. My invitation for you is, is that you show up like this for this part of the session. For the Reiki and ancestral clearing. And this. And this. <laughs> that you be empty, that you be present, that you go with the flow. And, yeah, I'm like thinking, and these. <laughs> well, I feel like when you show up like that, then these are going to come from that. That's what the energies are. Those other cards are like the foundation on which these can arise. Out of that nothing, out of that surrender. Because yes is surrender. Comes these. So it's Osho Zen Tarot and Work Your Light decks. Okay. So go ahead and close your eyes and I want you to put down your devices. Because even in a sense that's playing small if you're going to be distracted in this part of the session because you're about to receive this energy in this transmission if you choose to you don't have to if you choose to receive it it's a it's a self-respect and it's a valuing yourself when you fully become present to receive this gift. It's valuing yourself and it's valuing the gift as well. Close your eyes. And settle in. Deep in the breath. Imagine that you're riding on a molecule of oxygen that you're be, you become microscopic and you're on your next in breath you're riding that wave that force of breath into the nose into the nasal passages into the throat into the lungs into the alveoli the breathing sacs or the whatever in the lungs Feel the diaphragm expand, which allows the lungs to expand. Feel the ribs expand, the chest expand. And in the body, that oxygen then, through the processes of the, the amazing, miraculous processes of the body, 
that molecule goes into the bloodstream. Imagine yourself now taking a ride through riding a red blood cell that's oxygenated, that's full of life. As it moves with lightning speed. Starting from the arteries. Just noticing all of the processes that are occurring in this very millisecond that keeps this body alive. It's a miracle. Feel your heart. <clears throat> Pumping that blood, it's never stopped from the moment of conception when the heart was formed. It's still here, it's still beating all of those years later. It's never once usually faltered. Breathe into the heart. Breathe in appreciation. Imagine the blood moving through the body, so clean, so clear, so purified with each heartbeat, the heart beating pure and true. The electrical forces the energetics feel deeply into the experience of having and being in this body right now some of you will be able to sense the very subtle or maybe not so subtle feeling of having a body, the weight and also the energy and what we're feeling is the result of all of these micro processes, nano processes atomic, subatomic, quantum, as well as macro processes of the breathing, of the digestion. And now tune into the Reiki energy that's also being channeled, that your body mind is drawing in. And just do your best, and if, if your mind gets caught in that idea, then let it go and just flow.
I just noticed that as this energy moves in through and around you. You are allowing it, surrendering, being a yes to it, being no thingness, being empty. As this energy imbues every fiber of your being. Imagine this Reiki energy now in your head, in your brain, in your mind. The brain is a miracle. Humans haven't even been able to figure out a tiny bit, well, only been able to figure out a tiny bit of what what all is going on in there. Just imagine the brain, the fluids, the cells, the neurons, the pathways, the gray matter, the actual matter. all of the parts and this beautiful energy moving in through and around bringing whatever's needed for your best and highest good imagine it moving into your pineal gland in the center of the brain. And see if you can sense that energy in that space. And continually surrender over and over when the mind comes in, when it has stories, thoughts, plans, remembering, opinions, resistance. It's not about making it wrong. It's about noticing and then releasing attachment to the identification with it. That you can witness and observe that dynamic happening means that you are not that. You are not your thoughts. Now imagine this energy surrounding you in your auric field, the egg-shaped field of energy around the body, front, back, up, down, 360 degrees around. Sense into that space. Around the body.
And just receive, let go, let go, surrender, go with the flow, embody the energy of yes, embody the energy of no thing. And we will close with an ancestral clearing prayer. If you choose to receive, just be open. Infinite creator, source of all that is, we love you. Thank you for loving us. We humbly ask that you open, bless, expand, lead, guide, and direct us into your perfect light, love, and life, and always, completely, now, and forever, please and thank you. For all hearing my voice right now, all of our family members, all of their, our relationships, all of our ancestors, and all of their relationships through all relevant time, space, and dimension. For all hurts, wrongs, judgments, and burdens, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, sexual, and financial through thought, word, or deed, please help us all forgive each other, forgive ourselves, Forgive all people, and all people forgive us completely and totally, please and thank you. Please lift out all weight, pain, burden, sin, death, debt, negativity, spells, hexes, curses, black magic, white magic, guilt, fear, shame, unworthiness, and limitation of all kind. Transform it into your love and let your love flow back in and through us, filling and giving us all complete peace now and forever. Please and thank you. Please help us love and bless each other, love and bless ourselves. Be at peace with each other and at peace with ourselves. Please and thank you, please and thank you, please and thank you.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. So be it done, thank you. Please remain as you are. If you feel you're in a deep process or in process, If you feel ready to come back to a wakeful state, just very slowly do that. Let the eyes open, remaining unfocused. Integrate for a moment. Closed eye and open eyes. Space. Open eyes feel into the body. Welcome back. Very powerful. Thank you all so much for joining. Please, if you feel called to connect with me deeper, follow that heart call. Follow the yes. And or whatever that might be for you. For some of you, that is what it may be. Welcome, Lisa Nanda. Thank you, BJ, for the donation. Hmm. Hola, Mark. Don't forget to follow me here if you got value from this session or get value from my offerings, please donate. You can get the replays on YouTube. Please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And if you feel called to learn more about my money mindset program and what I posted just yesterday. It starts June 1st, so we're going into the final lead up. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Wendy, Marielle, Amy, Allison, EI. Thank you, Jamie, for the donation, Rose. Liz, Maureen, J.E., Stephanie, welcome back. Oh, great. So this will be up on replays. It will be a number of days, but it will be the latest Saturday Night Live whenever that does get up. You're welcome, Ginger. Thank you. Tina. I love what I do, and I do what I love. And... I'm so grateful and blessed. And even what I was saying earlier about, you know, this journey of becoming and unbecoming. The way I've been able to show up here in this way for you, for myself, is by doing the uncomfortable 
overcoming myself saying things and doing things either saying them to myself and or my coach or my mentor or my guide in doing them it's only actions that have led me here ultimately along with the inner part of that work thank you Mishi, Tina, Diana thank you so now um, Stephanie it's 10.30 a.m. in Bali We've got almost 200 wonderful beings here. And please check out my recordings, um, my meditations here. I have two ancestral clearings, the master prayer in the free tracks, the abundant, comprehensive abundance prayer in the paid tracks. Stephanie, I didn't realize it was you, because, <laughs> oh, that's what happened. I'm glad you said that. Oh, yay. I actually, I had an inkling of that, that it was you, and then you, yeah, but it was like really subconscious, but yeah, glad to see you. So I will go live again, and if you follow me, you can see that and be notified. And I will also tell you, yeah, in 24 hours, how lucky are we? <clears throat> um, let's see what it's about, because I can't recall. Ooh, we're going to talk about creating abundance, releasing scarcity, and then two days after that, on the 21st, 22nd, we're going to do our There's Nothing Wrong With You book study, which we haven't done in a little bit. So if you want the free PDF of that book, There's Nothing Wrong With You, which is amazing and powerful, send me a private message. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening. See you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.